have a question about today's program, you can text it to us live. Text your question to 425-477-9950. That's 425-477-9950. Now, back to the show. Growing up exploring Alaska's ever-changing landscape inspires a lifetime of learning. That's why Alaska 529 is a proud sponsor of the Alaska Sea Life Center and focused on helping families take small steps now for their child's future education. To learn about the Alaska 529 plan, its investment objectives, risks, and costs, carefully read the plan disclosure document available at alaska529plan.com. Alaska 529. Save in Alaska. Study anywhere. Everyone gather round, it's a time of day for Virgin Small Fry School. We can hardly wait. Make new ocean friends connect with old pals too. Let's learn about the sea, there's so much to do. La la small fry. La la small fry. La la small fry. La la small fry. Just to meet, it's virtual small fry school. Go ahead and grab a seat. Hi friends, welcome back to virtual small fry school. My name is Rebecca and I'm so excited that you're here with us today. We're having difficult uh, technical difficulties, but I think we're, we've got it now. So. Thank you so much for waiting uh, for us. Um, so we will be hosting these live. Oh, actually, um, we have a different format coming up and I'll explain later. Um, but today we are hosting live and if you have any questions, please text them to the number in the description below. And I want to acknowledge that I live and work on the traditional homeland of the Alutig Suktiak people. And also I'm wearing a mask to keep my animal friends and my human friends safe. Last week, we learned about what puffins like to eat. This is pyrite, and pyrite has about 15 little silver stars in his bill. A puffin's favorite foods are fish, mussels, clams, and squid. We were caretakers for the day, and we prepared our own food. Some of us had fish, and some of us had bananas. We also colored during the week. Thank you so much for sharing. Today we're learning about how puffins communicate with their flock. A flock is a group of birds of the same species or the same type that travel, rest, um, and eat together. So I want to introduce you to the bird species that we have here in the aviary. Meet the birds in the aviary. This is the red-legged kittiwee. This is a common mer. This is a tufted puffin, like Dory. We have horned puffins too.
This is a black oyster catcher. Pigeon guillemot. Harlequin ducks. The male has the colorful feathers, and the female is next to him. Smuse. The male is in white, the female is next to him. Rhinoceros Auklet The Rhinoceros Auklet has a little horn on his bill. King Eider Colorful eiders are the males, the female is brown. Spectacled eiders. The male is colorful. The female is next to him and is brown. Eiders are sea ducks. There are so many birds here in the aviary and summer is a special time because they all have their breeding plumage. In the winter they look very different. But all these birds here have to communicate with each other. Can birds talk? No! So let's learn from Dory to hear how she communicates with her flock. Dear Small Fry School friends, hearing about your favorite foods made me hungry. It was so exciting to tell you about my home and how I get my food. Without a place to keep me safe in a tummy full of fish, I wouldn't be a very happy puffin. The last thing that is really important to puffins is our flock. In my flock, there are eight other puffins like me. Sometimes we hang out, sometimes we don't get along and we have ways to tell each other how we feel. When I feel happy, I get a little twinkle in my eye. When I feel angry, I open my beak wide and throw my head back. When I want attention, I sit where my fans can adore me. And when I want to be alone, I go relax in my corner by myself. When puffins are in love, they tell each other by tapping their beaks together like a smooch. What kind of feelings do you have? 
How do you show those feelings to others? Love, Dory the Tufted Puffin. feeling today and how do you show those feelings to others I'm feeling happy and I'm showing it by smiling but you can't see it because I'm wearing a mask but I am smiling now I want to um, introduce you to a friend who you've actually have met before but haven't seen in a while so do you remember who this is this is Tuffy and Tuffy is a tufted puffin. I know. How are you, Tuffy? You're good, yeah, it's going great. So Tuffy has feathers to keep Tuffy warm. What color are the feathers? Black, yeah. Tuffy has a bill to eat. And that bill is orange and yellow. And he also has eyes because he has to see where he's going or she, where she's going. And now we can't see them right now, but Tuffy also has big orange feet to walk on land. I know in the last thing, what do birds do in the sky? What do you do, Tuffy? You fly using your wings. Yeah, but they also use them to dive in the water like some of these other birds behind us are doing. Now for our activity today, Tuffy and I are going to be buddies. So get yourself your own buddy. And we are going to be, um, Allison is going to be helping us. So Allison, take it away. Hello. Alrighty. So we aren't going to hear Rebecca or Tuffy talk today because birds can't talk, can they? No. So um, instead, we're going to talk, have them talk with their eyes, their bodies, and through different behaviors. So like Rebecca said, find a sibling, find a buddy, or maybe your adult. Alrighty, without making any sounds, how would you show your buddy that you are feeling happy? What about, how would you show that you're feeling grumpy? Yeah. What about sleepy? Time for a nap, huh? What about hungry? How would you show that? You'd want food. Yeah. Now, Rebecca, Tuffy, and friends at home, imagine you are a puffin just like Tuffy. How would you tell your friend that you are glad to see them? By touching beaks. So Rebecca is using her hands to pretend that she has a beak. How would you tell your friends that maybe you need some space? You would toss your head back open your mouth and shake your head. Awesome, awesome job, friends. Oh, <laughs> that was so much fun. Thank you, friends, thank you so much, Tuffy. Now, friends, if you have any questions, please text them uh, to the number in the description below. But also, I wanna say thank you to Allison, and today is Allison's birthday. So let's say thank you to Allison on three. One, two, three. Happy birthday, and thank you. Thanks, everybody. So Rebecca, do mm -hmm. puffins look like that the whole time, like all year? Oh no, this is gorgeous. This is summer um, breeding plumage. But no, they actually look much different in the winter. And I do have a picture, um, if you want to show us, of what a tufted puffin looks like in the fall and in the summer. So in the summer, you can see those beautiful yellow feathers behind their eyes, and in the fall, they are not there, so they look much different. And then we also have a picture of the horned puffin to show you what they look like. So on the left is their uh, winter plumage, and on the right is their summer plumage or their breeding plumage. Great questions. Rebecca, do you have a favorite bird? Yes, Tuffy, uh, and <laughs> I also, I know. They're all, they're all amazing, Tuffy, they're all amazing. But I do like the spectacled eiders. Um, our male spectacled eider, his name is Poe, and his uh, lady, his female mate is Alcott. I know, they're, they're your friends, Tuffy, yeah. 
So Rebecca, what do their eggs look like? Oh, great question. So I do have some pictures to show you. Um, if we want to switch over to that. In just a sec. Let's do this one. Click on that. Yeah. So this is a tufted puffin egg, and it's white. And this is what their burrow would look like. Let's see if I can get it better. Here we go. So this is what their burrow would look like. And this is an egg. I also have a common mer egg. And these are really pretty because they come in this really um, like blue color, but not all of them. And then they all have um, these cool spots as well that um, are different per egg. They're really cool. <laughs> hey, Rebecca, yes. do you know how many tufted puffins are here in the aviary? Oh, Dory said there were eight others like her. So I think nine. Mm -hmm. Great question. Do we have any other questions? Friends, if you have any other questions, please text them. I'm going to explain to you what's going to happen in these next um, few weeks. I know. And uh, Tuffy, I know you're so busy. Thank you so much for joining us. Friends, can you say thank you to Tuffy? Thank you so much for joining us. I know you've been so busy, and Tuffy has so many things to do to see other friends. Bye, Tuffy. So in these uh, next four weeks, our last four weeks are going to be a little different. Uh, the next three weeks, our um, programs are going to be uh, pre-recorded, so they won't be live. But if you have any questions during that time, please also text them in. Someone will be answering those questions. Someone will be near that phone or that number to be answering those questions for you. We are still going to have a, um, a couple of activities and story time, one, of our, one story time. Um, and it's all going to be on the octopus. So we're going to be focusing on the octopus. And the last week, our fourth week together, um, we are going to be live answering all your questions that um, you have had that maybe you didn't ask in the, um, in the three weeks prior to that. And also, we are going to be going over everything we have learned um, in, those, in these next three weeks. So again, these next four weeks are going to look a little different, but we do want your feedback. Um, I want to know how uh, these last three weeks, so including this week and the last two weeks have been for you and these uh, next four, four weeks, how they are for you and what you like best. But also, yeah, we just want to improve the program for you. So any feedback that you have for us would, will be great. So um, any more questions? No? Okay. So for story time today, we have the angry little puffin. And again, I want to thank you so much for joining us today. And I also want to thank Alaska 529 for sponsoring uh, this program, this episode. And um, I will leave you with story time. And I'll see you again in like four weeks. But you will see my face again next week. <laughs> Bye. The Angry Little Puffin by Timothy Young. What's that? Some kind of penguin? Oh, it's a sweet little penguin. That's a funny looking penguin. Hey, what a kooky little penguin. If one more person calls me a penguin, I don't know what I'll do. Look at the cute little penguin. Ugh. That's it. I can't take it anymore. All day long I hear, look at the funny little penguin. And what a silly looking penguin.
I am not a penguin. I am a puffin. P U double F I N. Puffins are definitely not penguins. It's bad enough I have to live in the penguin house at the zoo and watch their lame-brained antics. People don't even read the sign on my window. They just assume I'm a penguin. I mean, there are so many differences. For one thing, penguins live in the Antarctic, near the very bottom of the Earth. Puffins live on the top of the world. We're polar opposites. Where do you live? It makes me so mad that I could jump off a cliff, but do you know what would happen if I did? I'd fly away. That's right, puffins can fly. Not like those dopey penguins who seem to have forgotten how. Why bother being a bird if you can't even fly? I don't know why penguins get all the attention. Toys, movies, television, even comic books. It's penguins, penguins, penguins. Come on, the Puffin would be the coolest guy in any comic book. It's not fair. For once, I'd like someone to come up and say, look, it's a Puffin. Look, Daddy, it's a Puffin. <gasps> Puffins are my favorite. They're really neat and they live in the Arctic Ocean. This one is an Atlantic Puffin. He's also called a common Puffin. I think he should be called a special Puffin. Look how cute he is. There are other kinds too, like the Tufted Puffin and the Horned Puffin, but I like this one best. He eats fish and squid and sand eels and he makes his home in cliffs near the ocean. And you know what, Daddy? He can fly, unlike those penguins over there. He's so sweet. I wish I could have a pet puffin. Do you have any pets? I have a pet dog. Wow, you sure know a lot about puffins. Let's go see if they have a toy puffin in the gift store. Hey, what's that? It's some kind of penguin, I guess. Well, he sure is a happy little penguin.